Please be seated and let us pray. Our Lord and our God, the owner of our lives, we know that our destinies are in your hands. You brought us into this world, and we know that you are the one who will take us back to yourself. As contained in John chapter 14, verse 3b, which says, so that wherever you are, your people may be also. We are grateful unto you for this moment. We know you are living among us. We ask and pray that you come into our lives, open our spiritual heart to see you, to accept you, your ways, that your ways will look fresh in our hearts, that at the end, glory shall be yours, and that your word will be a light to lighten our darkness, so that we are ever we want us to be, will be. And at the end, the joy of serving you will be full in our lives. Thank you, Father, for granting all of us the privilege to be here and to learn at your feet this morning. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I say praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. May the Lord's name be praised in our individual lives and corporate lives and in the life of the church. First and foremost, I want to give thanks to God for being our maker being our protector, being our guide and guard throughout our staying on this mortal, mundane world. I know that if it is not by God, we are nothing. And so this morning, we owe every gratitude unto God for giving us another privilege and opportunity to sit before him this morning. I do know that some years back, particularly last year, we were with God on this day. And today again, we are here. Please, can we put hands to God together for God Almighty? Thank you. Amen. I know that the thought of God towards you and I is not of evil, but of good. I think that is why we are here this morning. Today is a special Sunday, which you and I, we know. And I want to believe that, yes, in this new special Sunday, the first Sunday of this kind of the new year, God will renew our strength. God will prosper us. Amen. Every carryover carried by anybody, the Lord will speak to it. Amen. And the one that has to go from us will go from us for us to be fit for the journey of 2023. And I know God will not disappoint us as long as we are faithful unto him. I say somewhere that God does not owe anybody. It is at times we are the one that owes God. And that is why I believe that this Covenant Sunday should be real in our individual lives. When we say enough is enough, I'm ready, you are ready to move forward to the glory of God. This year shall be our year. A year of victory and a year of success. A year of breakthrough for every child of God. Whosoever believeth in God, this year is his year. This year is high year. Amen. Wonderfully, the Lord will stand with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me come down to our level, our mundane aspect of man and woman. I want to congratulate you for this day. If it were not God, we wouldn't have been here this morning. And so for this simple reason, all our fathers in the house, all our mothers in the house, all our aunties in the house, 
and our little brothers and sisters, I sincerely want to say you are welcome to the presence of God. Our God will do what he knows best to do for his people that loves him, which I know you are not out of place. You and I are in the right place today. And for the fact that we are alive, and for the fact that we are not sick, for the fact that we managed to be here this morning, the Lord will renew our strength. Amen. Fear not. Just believe in God that this God of 2023 is our God. And he will give us breakthrough at all runs. Amen. And so, today, we have what they call Covenant Sunday. Covenant Sunday. It's a serious Sunday in the life of Methodist people, especially the believers who do not come to church ordinarily and go ordinarily, but who have felt that they are, they are around with their father and their father will speak to them. And so this morning, our text shall be found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 31. And I want to assure you, verse 31, chapter 31, verse 31, and it says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Israel and Judah, they are one. It was the trouble that made them to separate, to be separated at a time. But at the fullness of time, God visited them and said, enough is enough. Come together. I'm going to make a new agreement. And today, as many as we are in this church, as many as we are in Nigeria, as many as we are Methodist people, God is ready on this day to make agreement a new agreement with us. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen? Are we ready to make a new agreement with God? Yes, we are ready. And I assure you, God is not far from us. He's among us. And, that is, and he is our source of strength. And because he's our source of strength, apart from him, we can do nothing. And so we must be able to come to him and say enough is enough. Let's have a new agreement. And what is the meaning of covenant? Covenant has ever been there right from the days of Adam. Adam was the first person, or his family, he and his wife, we are the first family that God made a covenant with. And what was the covenant at that time? That at every cool evening, there must be fellowship. I know you must have read that part of the Bible, the Old Testament in the book of Genesis. But you know, like I said before, God does not owe, but we are the one owing God. And so Adam, at that point, disappointed God. But that is not where we are going. Where we are going is the meaning of covenant. Covenant is an agreement. It could be a written agreement or an oral agreement. And it had to be between two individuals. And in individual nature, it could be between the greater and the lower, or equal, equal individuals coming together to make agreement for one thing or the other that matters to them in life. At this point, that of God is the greater and lower individuals coming together. In African contests or in Nigerian contests, two young men can make agreement. A sister and a brother can make agreement for how they can come together and live together for life. And the way they used to do it in the past, in a typical village in, across Nigeria, when two lovers, a male and a female, this, is planning to come together. 
For one reason or the other, they want to perfect their marriage. What do they do? In the course of making agreements or a pledge of marrying each other, at times they use, before the arrival of, before the arrival of what? You don't know. Before the arrival of HIV is, they were cutting their themselves with a razor blade or any sharpening object. And they will say what they want to say, that if you, if, if you, if you run away from me or I run away from you, let this oath of blood judge us. And they were doing it in the time past. That seems to be a serious agreement. But I want to advise that no lady, no young man or woman should do that today because we don't know the content of the blood. That was part of agreement that people used to do in a rural area, even urban in the cities. Serious agreement. But that is not what matters to us this morning. What matters to us this morning is that agreement or, or pledge or vow that we have decided to make together with God. And God was the one who rolled it out first. He said, behold, the days are coming, and the day is now with us. Can I hear somebody say amen? amen. Say, the day are coming, says the Lord, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel with the house of Methodist people. God is ready to make a covenant and agreement with you because he loves us, because he loved us. He came out to say enough is enough. And so God in his own benevolence decided to come out before the Israelites of old and said, I will make an agreement or a pledge with you. And the one I shall make shall be, be different from the ones I made with your forefathers. The one that was written on ten tablets of stone that Moses, on his way coming back from Mount Sinai, after being with God for that 40 days and 40 nights, saw people worshiping a golden image, a golden calf, and with an annoyance, he threw it on the ground. And that, that God broke him. But God said, this time around, <coughs> I will write it. The new agreement that I'm going to make shall be written on the heart of every man. Praise the Lord. You see how God has favored you and I as a people that he loved. He said, I'll make a new covenant, a new agreement with you. It shall be different from the ones I made with your forefathers. And this one, it shall be in the heart of every, of every man. And what is it all about? That everyone shall know me. No one has to teach his neighbor or her neighbor to see the Lord before he or she knows the Lord. My dear people of God, this year shall be a special year for all of us. A year that we decide, we in our own way decide to go to God and sit with God and learn with God. It is not how long you have been in a church that matters, but what is your relationship, your commitment with the things of God? Let me tell us the story of Moses went to Mount Sinai and came back. When he was coming back, he was not the same pe person that went up. I don't know whether you have read that part of the Bible. Bible made us that God's love is contagious. God's righteousness and holy, holiness and purity is contagious. I want to believe that we, all, we have medical people who must have known what is contagious. We have contagious diseases like Lakpa Lakpa and hosts of others that when, when, they blow, when they, another person's body touches the body of the, of the victim, they flew from it. As soon as it touches your body, you, you, you too must have contacted that disease. And so Moses was closer to God. 
And he learned, he learned much from God. And at the end, the man that went up was no longer the man that came down. And the people said, Moses, close to her, veil yourself. If not, we are perishing. My dear, this year is no longer a, a joke. A year that we have decided to go closer to God and be part of God. God is ready to make himself available unto you. And when God has decided to say, I'll make a covenant with you, he is ready to make a covenant with you. The question now is that, are we really ready to go with God in this journey of 2023? And if you are going to go to, what is that that is in you that will not allow you to sit with God and make that covenant, that agreement? It's very, very important. Search yourself and let me search myself. What is that that will not make us make a, a good covenant with somebody, with God? At the beginning of the year like this, if you go to every corner of our society, some people will make a kind of agreement, a kind of promise, and said, last year I, was, I used to take 10 bottles of beer, but this year I'm no longer going to drink a bottle. I have decided to pack bottle from my side. Some parents or some fathers of every home, some homes will say, I will not go out night, I will not go out in the night any longer. Because at times some families they will go out, some, some fathers will go out, our mothers will go out, they will not come back. Their, parents, their children may not even know them. It is their uncle that is around, that used to visit them, stay with them, and the one they will know as their, as their father. Enough is enough. God is making an agreement with you. And at, at verse 4, 34 of that chapter 31, the Lord says something, which I want all of us to have it at, at the back of our minds. What is that? The Lord said, All the sins of our yesterdays, I will forgive you. My brothers and sisters that are here this morning, I may not know whether we are afraid of our yesterday. Every one of us sitting this morning, we have yesterday. But do not allow your yesterday to be clouded you are today in the presence of God. All you need to say is that enough is enough. When David in his own time said enough is enough, he had a good relationship with his God. And when that prodigal son or child did say, I will arise and go to my father. And when he went back to his father, the father received him with the whole arms and embrace him. God is ready to embrace us if you quit our old ways of life. And that is why God is saying a new covenant, a new agreement I'm going to make with you. God is ready to make a new agreement with Methodist people. And if you are ready, God will start his work with us again. And every pain, every sorrow of our, of our lives will pack and go. Because God will take over. Let God take over, in your, take over of your life in this year, 2023. Fear not. He loves us and he cares for us. All we need to do is to say, yes, I'm sorry. I'm no more into my yesterday life. The yesterday life that does not or do not please God, enough is enough to that. And when we begin to live a new life, to the glory of God. I want to assure you that God will be happy. May God be happy with all of us in this year 2023 in Jesus' name. Amen. Some people who, in the course of life, they are in the church, but they are of sleeping partnership. But this time around, whatever the church wants you to do for you to make heaven, let us arise and begin to do it. 
May we never have excuse. I preach someone somewhere, I say no excuse. It is what you it is what you do not like to attend to or to attempt is that that you give excuse. But as long as you are you are interested in an issue, I want to tell you, no barrier will stop you from attending to that issue. And so in the case of things of God, in this year 2023, please, my people, because we do not know when the master shall come. We do not know when the Lord shall come and say enough is enough. And there is no excuse we are going to make. And there is no permission that God will grant you again. You may not, you and I may not have second chance. And so the only opportunity that God has given us by keeping us alive is enough for us to remember and to know that God is at work in my life. And if God is at work in your life and in my life, what shall we do to make God happy in, your, in our lives? You know, some time ago, according to the scriptures, in the Old Testament, in the family of Adam and Eve, all of them, they were into various assignments. Cain was a farmer. All of them were farmers. But God gave them every opportunity for their crops and their animals to do well. Cain, according to the story, they say Cain had the opportunity. God blessed him abundantly with products of ground. I tell you, this man refused to give the best to God. And the Bible recorded that God turned his back when he saw Cain and his offering. But in the case of Abel, Bible recorded too that Abel in his own way knew his God. I want to believe that all of us should know God first. <coughs> and that was why Jesus had to ask a question. He asked his disciples in his own time that whom do people say that I am? There was conflict of answers. It was only Peter that was able to answer it a little. <coughs> And when they couldn't give the concrete answer about what people, what is, what, how the people decided to see Jesus. But Jesus said, okay, if they do not know me, you that have been with me for that period of time, eating and drinking, sleeping and lying down with me, whom do you say that I am? Assuming that this question comes before you this moment, how would you have answered it? Jesus. It was among these twelve, it was only Peter that said, you are the son of God. And so I want to charge all of us that may we all in this year dig every story, study the Bible very well to know whom Jesus is and how, how important he is in our individual lives. And on that basis, we will be able to worship him in spirit and in truth. And so, my dear people of God, Covenant Day is a day of agreement, a day of pledging to be loyal to God. I have decided in my own accord that God, it is you I know. I know nobody. I don't know any other thing. And I want to believe that as method is faithful, you know any other thing than God? Is that not so? Are you knowing any other thing outside God? No way. <clears throat> and so, my dear, as we rise from this Covenant Sunday today, I ask and pray that this God of Covenant will visit us and will visit our family. And our family will be renewed again. In Jesus' name. But my dear, we need to have what they call authentic covenant. The covenant that God has approved for us and himself. 
But how many of us are ready to do this? Are you the one? Are you really ready? And for us to make covenant with God, our hands must be clean. Our hands must be what? Must be clean. The life of righteousness and faithfulness should be found in us. If you think that you can live outside Jesus, outside God, you are a disappointment to yourself. Because in John chapter 14, or sorry, John chapter 15, verse 5b, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. The other day, I visited somebody in the hospital. And when I was praying with him, after the prayer session, I was saying, how are you faring? He said, my problem is the problem of finance. How? He said, I'm using, I'm interested in finance because from time to time, they will give me oxygen. And this oxygen, I have to buy it. In a month, I have paid almost 300 and something to have os oxygen services to myself in the hospital. Then I came back, and I was looking. I sat down in the one corner of the house, and I said, how old am I? And I said, I'm 62. Multiply 300 and something by, by 12 months, by 12 months times 62 years, times the amount of that money. Where do I have money to pay to live if it's not the grace of God? And that is why we must be ready to be in union with God. Who knows what is good for his people? Who knows what is good for you and I? Who is not ready to disappoint you and I? And that is why I said every error in the past, we must leave them behind and begin to be focused on things of God that will make us to be a friend of Jesus. Jesus is a good friend that if you and I embrace him, we embrace peace, we embrace good life, we embrace whatever it takes us to be happy in life. But I do not know whether you have known this before. If not, today is your day of determination. Determination to say, God, I'm for you. We are in the world, as the Bible said, but not of the world. And so men and women, may we never be of the world. If we say no to the world, then Christ is for us. But how many of us are ready to embrace Jesus, especially on a day like this, sitting with him and taking time to make agreement with him? We are going to make this agreement in spirit and in truth. Make it with your heart. God said, I'll forgive you your sin. And he said, I'll remember it no more. Can you clap on for Jesus for me? Oh, my God. It is only the God of Christianity that can, can say this and do this. The other, the other religion has no thing like this. Islam, the leader of Islam has, has no promise for his people. Buddhism leader has no promise for his people. Hinduism leader has no promise for his people. But Jesus, on his own accord, said, all that you have done wrongly, I'll do what? I'll forgive you. And finally, I want to say, in Mark chapter 1, verse 15, the law says, the time has come. We must repent and believe the gospel. My dear, let us repent from our individual ways of life. I say this outrightly somewhere, sometime. It is when we confess our sins and say enough is enough that we become children of God. Because the expectation of God, you say, be ye perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. And be ye holy as your heavenly father is holy. In the course of agreement, we must be pure. If not, we have no right to sit with Jesus. 
And after that, we believe the gospel. Gospel is for us. Gospel is to mirror, to mirror our lives, to shape our lives, and for us, finally, to make heaven. Are we ready? Am I ready? Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we thank you for this privilege you have given to us on this faithful day to sit at your feet and to learn a little from your servant whom you have used as your mouthpiece. I ask and pray, O oh God, that you will empower your words that came down through me, that your people will walk with it and it will be a light to lighten their darkness. So that at the end, wherever you are, we may also be in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.